I'm going to start with the karakia and then we'll walk through a few of the housekeeping notes uh, before we get into the, the meeting pro proper. Whakataka te hau ki te uru. Whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina kia uta. Kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hi aki ana te atakura. E tio, i huka, e hauhu, tihei maori ora. Right, I declare the meeting open and welcome everybody to today's extraordinary meeting. Uh, please note that the meeting is being live streamed. I'm not sure how many people are on the live stream. We had 730 uh, for our last meeting, so hopefully we have a good audience again today. Uh, I have no apologies. Are there any conflict of interest declarations? Sorry, Cyrus, if you can see any, then let me know, but I didn't, don't imagine there will be. No. Okay, I'm. Okay, confirmation of the minutes. I'm going to move the motion that the council approve the minutes of the extraordinary meeting uh, on the 9th of April, which have been circulated and taken as read, confirmed as an accurate record of that meeting, uh, seconded by, I'll choose somebody I can't see, Councillor Condi. I'll put that. All those in favour, please uh, vote accordingly. Hope. Cyrus can you just put me as a yes. <laughs> I can't okay, find okay. it. Can't, can't get them. Okay. Is, is that passed? That is. Yeah, that's that's Sean. Yes. yes. Thank you. you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are no items not on the agenda, uh, but I do want to just make a, a, a quick uh, comment and a quick thank you um, about yesterday's events down on the south coast. So um, I just thought it'd be worth uh, recording those. Um, obviously, for most of us, uh, yesterday didn't seem a particularly unusual day weather-wise, but obviously down on the south coast, we saw some incredibly powerful waves, and, and I just wanted to uh, acknowledge the uh, the residents there who were affected by that, and also to thank uh, our staff, police, fire services, uh, and um, other uh, emergency services who went down and did a, a great job of looking after people, clearing up, making sure that uh, bubbles were respected. Uh, and so we are very grateful to all of you for the uh, for the service that uh, you gave uh, yesterday. Right, uh, that takes us to um, public participation, um, and we have one public participant. And normally, um, in the normal course of events, we wouldn't do this because uh, this item is not on the agenda. Uh, but because we are doing um, uh, council meetings only at the moment, uh, we, are, we are allowing for public participation on items not on the agenda within reason. Uh, and one public participant is very reasonable. Uh, so Peter, we've, um, we've got five minutes for you. If you can, we can get you back on video. Okay, thank you, Andy. Um, what I've come to speak about this afternoon, Mr. Can, can Chair, we get you on, just before you start, we'll get you on video so we can see you too. There we go, good. Hi, oh. hi, uh, Andy and fellow councillors. Um, what I've actually come to speak to you this afternoon about is the Innovation Streets Programme for government, which is due to come up at the moment. And I've forwarded a number of papers in regard to this. And there's $7 million up for grabs, and there's a subsidy of 90%, yes, 90% paid for by government. And it's really just a case of whether or not the Wellington City Council takes the opportunity to actually test out potentially infrastructure for cycling or pedestrians for that matter, which could be beneficial in the long term. And they give you through to June next year to complete the um, work concerned. As you'll appreciate, we've only got six months until the 8th of May or 8th of June to actually complete the first application. And then they actually have another application one month later. As you'll appreciate, more people are actually cycling all the time. And in front of you, I've actually got a chart which was issued by Wellington City Council, just to give you an idea of the numbers. However, 
in reality, some of those locations, and I'm specifically talking about Adelaide Road, Tasman Street, and Thorndon Quay, don't have the full year. So I've just put these up on another board, which I now present. As you can see, there's well in excess of half a million trips taken on these three locations. And it's really just a case of whether or not we can actually put up on a temporary basis, maybe for three months or six months, bollards or otherwise at Tasman Street and also at Adelaide Road. As you'll appreciate, these are two roads going in the same direction and they're both heavily used. And it's really just a case of which street is the best. We'll end up with a cycle route at some stage, but it's really just on what street and how you decide. And likewise, on Thorndon Quay at the moment, there is angle parking at a really sharp angle to the actual um, street concerned. However, really, it needs to be tactfully done and the car parks actually removed or vehicle parks as they more rightly are. As you'll appreciate, some people in business will not be happy with that. However, in reality, there's plenty of off-street parking there and there's no reason why we can't do that. I appeal to you to put in an application on the basis that there's more and more cyclists getting on the road and with the current situation where the buses will be used, but everything's going to be at a safe distance, I believe we'll be lucky if we can get 50% of the people who used to use buses back on the buses. And as a result, directly they'll be full. I don't want to be sitting on the bus with no one beside me, but somebody standing over me and I could be in for the flu. And this will go on for quite some time. So I appeal to you to really consider that the Wellington City Council should get round to putting in applications up to a million dollars, which is quite something, through to the New Zealand Transport Authority, so that government policy, as they want it to see implemented, is implemented by the Wellington City Council. I'm quite happy to address any questions, as you'd appreciate, there's benefits for the community in terms of health and fitness, which will basically be spun out on the population throughout New Zealand. Okay. Uh, Cyrus, how are we going time-wise there? Cyrus? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, are there any questions for Peter, please? Uh, and I can't see you at the moment. So um, I need to get my screen back up again. Right, okay, any questions for Peter? Nicola? Yes, I have. Um, and, I'm Tamitha, right. Um, okay, so, so thank you. So I'm just thinking about Thorndon Key because of course this came under discussion a couple of years ago. Are you aware that one of the city's biggest eye clinics is in the stretch that I think you're talking about? And also um, a major dance school, both of which have very heavy uh, numbers of visitors arriving by car? Um, I do, however, it comes at a price. There is some off-street parking, likewise with the kindergarten down there. And there's also the tyre centre coming into town, which in actual fact uses the car park as a more of a marketing ploy as opposed to a car park as such, because of yeah, well amount of car parks, and it could be off the road. Thanks, Peter. Uh, well, the quick questions, Councillor Paul and Councillor Cowart. Uh, yeah. Um, kia ora, Peter. Thank you so much for that presentation. I really appreciate it. My name is um, Tamitha Paul from the Central City. I just wanted to ask a question around, um, we have winter coming up and um, a lot of um, micromobility, e-bike and e-scooter companies are um, making their models more accessible because we know that they are quite expensive for some. So I'm wondering, um, in winter, do you do you have any data around the uptake of, of these modes of um, transport? And do you see any increases or decreases based on the weather? Or do you think cycling is pretty consistent throughout the year? If you have a look over this particular sheet, 
that gives you the statistics basically for um, on a month by month basis for last year. Would you like to go 2019 20? I, I, I think, sorry, so if we can capture that and share it with councillors, it'd be useful. We've had it. Okay. Okay, good. Right. Okay. Thank you for that, Peter. Thanks. And Councillor Calvert. Yeah, thanks, Peter, for coming in. Look, um, are you aware that a, a couple of years ago, Council did look at th the low part of Thorndon Key by the CBD and did agree on some parking changes where some of the um, angle parking would be removed um, and um, just to sort of create some more space? That hasn't actually been actioned, but were you aware of that? Um, I have been involved in another protest, which was actually down there, and appreciate that a lot of the angle parking, if used, ends up protruding over the actual cycle lane, as you might want to put it at the back of the vehicles concerned. And so clearly the only way you could possibly get around it is to do away with the angle car parks and maybe have them slightly out from the curve, as it is in Island Bay, to allow people to go between the cars parked, if they happen to be there, and likewise the pavement. Peter, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and uh, if you want to log yourself off uh, and uh, then sort of look on the live stream, you're very welcome to do that. Okay, thanks, Andy. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Go, Kite. Okay. Go. Okay, councillors, uh, that um, before we start the uh, debate on the one item we've got. Uh, I'm going to move that we suspend the same two standing orders that we suspended at the council meeting last week. That is 16.5, which is the one about speaking in place, because we don't want to, want to keep on standing up uh, from where, wherever we are and looking at each other's midriffs, and 27.7, .7, which is the one around uh, recording divisions. We, we will record all votes regardless. So I'm going to move we suspend those. Uh, Councillor Day, do you want a second? Can we all find our little voting buttons and do the voting. I will, I'll be voting yes if I can't find my button, uh, Cyrus. Okay. Let me know when we've got everybody voted. Yeah. Sean. Just waiting on votes from Councillor Matthews and Councillor O'Neill, um, but uh, otherwise you know. Well done. It's telling me on vote, I have voted, Cyrus. Okay. okay. Well, they're all done now, so that's unanimous. All done. Thank you. Brilliant. So that's passed, is it? Yep. Unanimous. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. That takes us to the one paper we have in open on the agenda. Uh, and I'm going to pass it over to Councillor Rush to introduce. Okay, uh, I'm not on mute. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, fellow councillors. I'm very pleased to uh, bring this report, this concerning report to your attention. It's the right place and the right time to be doing it. I'd like to thank uh, Mike Mendoza's team and the team at Wellington Water the incredible work that they've been doing in this space. So just in a, in a brief summary, we had a, an outage at the Mount Albert pipelines that connect Moa Point through to the Happy Valley landfill. It was estimated it would take five weeks and we immediately started tracking, costing the city about $100,000 a day. And that was in January. The fix for this is to bring in German expertise and equipment <coughs> Uh, which is not a cheap exercise in itself, nor, nor without uh, issues. Uh, then the border closed, which imperiled that uh, option. And that was when I raised this uh, problem uh, with you uh, via email. I raised it also with Wellington Water as to the ongoing nature and the possible indeterminate nature of the tracking solution. I had individual com uh, discussions with Mana Whenua representatives and Greater Wellington Regional Council and endeavoured to gain further information in relation to what our op options were. Very shortly after that, however, uh, as a consequence of excellent work from local MP Paul Eagle, uh, the German ambassador was involved 
and visas were issued for the engineers to come. They are now, I believe, on a plane uh, and the equipment that they are going to install is on its way here. No need for plan Bs or Cs at this stage. We have developed a plan B nevertheless, uh, which involves a temporary patch on uh, one of the pipes and pumping at low pressure through to Berenpur, uh, Berenpur Golf Course and then at high pressure over the hill to Happy Valley. Uh, let's hope we don't need to, to go there. Uh, in the future though, this use of pipes and, and sending sludge through to the landfill just doesn't sound right. And as a consequence, I have asked uh, for a, an inclusion in the paper today that the uh, that Wellington Water will be coming back to us in September uh, to show us what our options uh, might be available and in particular opportunities by which we could turn this sludge into some form of resource uh, and maybe make some uh, electricity out of it or, or fertilizer or others. So um, what I'd like to say as a consequence of uh, this process, though, is a big thank you to my colleagues on the Wellington Water Committee. In particular, Chair David Bassett was of enormous support to me, uh, CEO Greg Campbell from Greater Wellington as well, and uh, ex excellent discussions with Manafunu Reps, Kim Skelton, Naomi Sullivan, and Helmut Modling. In fact, uh, Helmut's call and cry for a, a long-term solution is echoed by me. And uh, I'm going to look forward to, to working with Mana Whenua in regard to possible long-term solutions with which we can all participate. Final word is uh, in, in regard to, to climate change. Um, I also asked for an inclusion, a recognition that the current plan A, which is trucking, uh, is a high emitting uh, option. It's temporary. Um, the long-term permanent solution that we hope will be developed after we hear from Wellington Water in September, we hope will reduce emissions and hopefully maybe bring us a little bit of renewable electricity. Uh, aspirational, but uh, I am uh, very pleased to uh, present this uh, paper to you and um, I move that the recommendations be accepted. Thanks, Councillor Rush. Uh, Councillor Thune, I believe you're seconding. Yes, and I'll uh, wait to speak until the end. I'll hold my right to speak. Thanks. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, anyone else wish to speak? I think we might as well. Okay, Councillor Paul. Hey, I just wanted to um, add in just very briefly that um, just on the amendment around um, the, can you just, sorry, sorry, can you just scroll to the red amendments around climate change? I just wanted to um, comment on this. Thank you for, to everyone, Sean, or uh, Councillor Rush has already mentioned for their incredible work, in, including Councillor Rush himself. I just wanted to note that um, we, we, we are acknowledging that, that the trucking of sludge is a high carbon um, emissions activity, but I just wanted to um, kind of make clear that um, or at least ask in the right of reply that we uh, that there might be some clarification on this amendment because I just feel that it might be indicating that it, it, it implies that we, you know, we should deal with it on site, which I agree, and we can find solutions in that respect. But what I don't want that to um, to mean is that um, certain environmental activities justify um, others. So, for example, we note that it's a high carbon emitting activity, um, but that doesn't justify it being disposed of in another way that might be environmentally unenvironmentally friendly. And I know that's not what you're implying, but I just wanted to make clear that. Um, the, that um, the means doesn't necessarily justify the ends. And I just wanted to raise that and, and thank you again for your work on that. Thanks, Councillor Paul. Who's next? Councillor Day. Kia ora koutou. Ko te wai o ngā mia katoa. Water is the basis for life. Um, I just really want to um, uh, really acknowledge the, the hard work of Wellington Water staff and my colleagues who have been working hard in the background trying to figure out the solution to this very big challenge. Um, there's been amazing uh, work to undertake in the last few weeks in very difficult conditions. And I know that for many involved, it's been a nail biting time, um, waiting to hear if people are on flights and um, if everything's gone smoothly. So thank you for um, putting up with the stress and for persevering, we really, really appreciate it. Um, I've got a couple of amendments um, to put forward um, today and I'd like to acknowledge um, Councillor Rush for his work in, in this space as well and 
and his efforts to um, communicate with mana whenua. Um, yeah, I just have to acknowledge um, I need a seconder for this, uh, for this amendment. So I'm sure there will be someone, I think Councillor Condi looks like she'll second this, which will be great. Councillor Paul, Councillor Paul was going to second it. I'm sure she'll still speak to it, um, but because she's spoken, she can't second it now. Um, so this is very, these are very simple amendments and it's really just to acknowledge the importance of water um, to Māori. Um, and actually, when you look at the, um, the processes um, that Māori would expect that we um, go through to deal with our wastewater, it actually benefits everybody. So um, we, need to, we need to take the lead from mana whenua. They have um, some very good um, ideas. And as um, Councillor Rush has already said, um, Helmut had he actually uh, requested us looking to a, a better long-term option, which is something that was in the pipeline. But it's good to know that um, that, that call is being listened to. So thank you very much. Um, and the other one was just to note that uh, mana whenua have, have given us some very clear statements to uh, express their, um, their whakaro, their thoughts around um, the importance of the way that we treat our water, in particular our wastewater. So I really want to acknowledge uh, mana whenua for the work that they've done over the um, last few days, putting those statements forward so that we have a very clear understanding of the importance of water and wastewater treatment. Um, from a Māori perspective. Uh, I'm going to finish there. I'm going to keep it brief because I know that we can um, we can make this meeting um, much faster than our last week's one. But thank you, everybody, for your mahi, and I'm looking forward to seeing people support this. Thanks, Councillor Day. Um, Councillor Condi, you're seconding. I just want to see if people are happy to accept it or do people want to speak to it? You want to speak to it, Laurie, or Councillor Foon? Accept Councillor. is fine. Okay. Does so anybody wish to speak to it or we're happy to accept? Councillor Young, you wanting to speak to it? Um, You've just muted. So, um, just very briefly, that whilst water may be important to Māori, I think water is important to every single human being and every single animal. I don't think it's a Māori-specific um, element. That's all I want Thanks, to say. Ca Thank you, Councillor Young. Anybody else? Should we put? Should we put it? Um, can I just have a right of reply to oh, that? Oh, you can have a right of reply. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, I just want to say that this by no means says that, it doesn't say that water is not important to everybody else, but what it says is that we need to take the perspective, uh, Māori perspective um, as a lead in this situation because we know of the, the importance of water to Māori. And actually, um, yeah, as we know, it'll benefit everybody. So it's not saying that anyone else doesn't have that value. It's just saying this is important. Yeah, okay. okay, thank you. Uh, we will vote. That's 15, they're all, all oh, 14 now. Somebody un, unticked, 15. Right, that's everybody. Got everybody there? Okay. You happy with that, Cyrus? Yep, unanimous. Cool, good, thank you. Unanimous. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, uh, back to the substantive. I think there's another amendment, Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, thank you. Um, look, this amendment, I um, don't anticipate this being controversial either, but I just also wanted to uh, join with others and acknowledge the, the work of officers, uh, particularly those at Wellington Water. I found um, the description of how the liner will work, uh, if all goes to plan, absolutely fascinating. It's a very, very, to me, a very, very interesting uh, feat of engineering. Um, and I was very interested to hear exactly how it would uh, be installed and in, in, in the, that process. I also just wanted to um, acknowledge that if Wellington Water does go for option two, that will mean quite an impact for the golf course, uh, for the residents near Rhine Street, um, and also for the home of Compassion. So it's particularly important given that, that those groups do have some uh, extra engagement and extra knowledge of what they can expect. And I'd also just like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Foon, who with me was very keen to see uh, the community that we represent being actively involved in the process and actively understanding uh, what has occurred uh, or what is likely to occur if, if option two is adopted. And I just wanted to, um, in my comments, also acknowledge the real patience and tolerance of the South Coast residents in dealing with the uh, trucks that have been a constant since January with the putrid odour 
um, but also uh, to the drivers as well for their really, really hard work in doing this really important um, and sometimes quite unpleasant job on behalf of us all. Um, and Wellington Water took a really responsible attitude to those trucks, told the drivers very clearly, there's no need to speed, we want you to take your time, um, we, we, we really want this to be done properly, we really want to make sure we have uh, as little impact on residents as possible. And those messages uh, have been really supported and um, uh, has, it's made residents' um, tolerance and patience go that much further. So yeah, thanks everybody. You going to, you've moved the amendment, which we've all, all got? Yeah, 11, 12, 13. Thank you. Um, second. There, and it's seconded by... Thanks. Seconded by, who was the seconder? Yeah, Councillor Matthews, Matthews, thank you. Uh, again, um, does anybody wish to, do you, does anybody wish to speak to this? That includes Councillor Matthews. I'm fine. Okay, Councillor Thune, did you want to speak to it? Um, yes, I'd just like to back Fleur's statements up, but that uh, we really do inform the community so that they're abreast of this situation if we need to go to it. But also, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Fitzsimons, do you need a <laughs> right to reply to that? I don't think so. Right, cool. Okay, well, we will vote. One to go, 15. Yep. All done, Cyrus? Shot. Unanimous, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good. Right, it takes us back to the substantive. Does anybody else wish to speak? I, I will just say a few words if I can, uh, and that is, is also to do some thanks. Um, but uh, so first of all, I, I just again want to echo the thanks to all the, the staff at Wellington Water uh, and all the, the other people involved. And I want to thank the contractors who are you know, doing the, the stinky job of, uh, of taking the trucks out to uh, from our point through to um, uh, through to the landfill. And I also want to thank uh, Councillor Rush for his diligence in working on this uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, and also for having the courage to explore some options. But those didn't go anywhere, that's fine, but you had the, the bravery to, to at least have a look at things and the, the lateral thinking, and I think that's, um, we should always commend, uh, commend that. Um, every option which we've got in front of us uh, has clearly got impacts uh, on the environment, different levels of risk, uh, different cost, um, uh, different cost of implications. And I guess the other thing I think we do need to say, and, and because we're in a public environment, we need to say that this is a risky process. And that the, you know, this is the biggest, apparently the biggest uh, one of these, or biggest of example of this technology being used in Australasia, ever. Uh, it's a, you know, 1.8 kilometre long pipes, you know, through a, a, a 150 mil uh, existing pipe. It's got to be cleaned out carefully uh, and then slowly drawn through. Um, you know, that's why we're getting experts uh, in from overseas to to do it because nobody in New Zealand will have done this. Uh, they did. Uh, they arrived actually last night, uh, and they while they all come from Germany, they're actually all British and Dutch, uh, which is interesting. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing them down here after they've done their uh, done their um, uh, say hibernation after they've done their quarantine time. Uh, so, but this this is risky, and if something goes wrong, and we can't get these things through, uh, then you know then we've got to go to another plan. Uh, plan B is there as a uh, an option which Councillor Fitzsimons amendment covers in terms of a process to talk with the community if we have to do that. Uh, and um, and then if, you know, then what worst comes to worst is actually getting in there and putting a, a new set of pipes through the tunnel, hanging it from the roof. The reason that hasn't been done uh, as an option earlier is because that is a, a risk to people. Uh, and so I guess what we need to say is that councillors often in the, the job of doing things which are risky, and sometimes our community doesn't understand that these things can go wrong. And we need to say up front that sometimes these things, these things can go wrong. And we hope they don't. Uh, obviously, we've got the best expertise in there to get it right. A lot of planning has gone into to play. And again, I want to thank the Wellington Water team for all that work. Uh, but we need to make it clear that this is, you know, this is a challenging, a challenging piece of work. Final thing I wanted to mention is regarding the um, addition around the sludge. So that was a paper which was programmed for September. The last council took the deliberate decision to bring forward money to uh, to put in place a plant to treat the sludge. Because essentially, if we don't do that, we have to, if it goes into the landfill, it has to be mixed. The ratio has to be four to one. So every 
tonne of sludge that goes into the landfill, dewatered, uh, still has to have four tonnes of, um, of other waste in there. That fills the landfill up a lot faster. It makes it harder for us to, to do waste minimisation. In fact, at the moment, we've actually been putting in um, soil and rock uh, in, in lieu of, um, of, of other waste. And of course, it, the, the landfill extension becomes a, a challenge as well. So uh, there are some rocks and hard places that we're between here. Uh, and I think what is, and I agree here, Councillor Rush, with the comment you made earlier, uh, that regardless of where we go, we're now looking not only at a, a sludge treatment plant, uh, the, the, the options via the sludge treatment plant at Mile Point or at Kerry's Gully, and it'll be you know, good to see the advice that we get back from officers uh, on that. Back to you. Deputy Mayor Free has a question. Oh, Deputy Mayor Free wishes to talk, sorry. Yeah, not a question, um, because we're in debate. But um, yeah, look, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, I think this is a really important paper. There's, there's um, in a way, there's a crisis we're dealing with here, but there's actually some really positive, strong indications too about how we're going to move forward. Um, I thank um, Councillor Rush and Councillor Foon uh, and, and Councillor Panett previously, and actually Councillor Sparrow was also involved in this in the last triennium, along with me and, and Councillor Lee. I mean, it's been quite clear for ages, the sludge problem is a problem. We really got to, to have a better solution. It's limiting us on so many levels and it's not the kind of city we are, are going to aspire to. I'm sure we'll all agree that um, our capital city needs to have a better solution than just mixing our sludge with, with, with um, one part to four parts of landfill waste. Um, so thank you for that, those pointing towards the future. Thanks also to um, the helpful amendment around mana whenua. Um, it was, um, it was really good to, to read their statements. Um, thank you for sending those through. Um, it's quite clear, they're quite clear too that we need a better solution if at all possible. Um, they're also quite clear that they don't regard, they, they don't regard putting it out to sea as a, as a solution. Um, I think that's uh, useful. Um, and the engagement, of course, thank you, um, Councillor Fitzsimons, that's really important, not just for Southern Ward residents, but also a lesser extent, Eastern Ward, Ward residents who've also put up with the trucks. Uh, going from Mower Point round to the to um, the landfill, so I'm really happy to completely and um, full-heartedly support all of these, wholeheartedly support all of these amendments and the paper itself. Thanks, thanks, Deputy Mayor Free. Councillor Rush, right of reply. Oh, uh, I think my second. Yeah, sorry, Councillor Councillor Foon, you wish to you wish to speak. Okay, she sorry, you just put the hand up just there at the end. There you go. Uh, kia ora Tato and Andy, thank you for that. You've actually stolen a lot of, of what I wanted to say. Sorry. But um, I think I just want to acknowledge, um, again, all of those that have been working on this solution and also Councillor Rush for working alongside the team at Wellington Water and our offices to bring these amendments today. But what I do want to make sure is that we, we make sure that the options for a long-term sustainable solution is still prioritised and brought to us in September as planned because, because of the reasons we've heard ahead of this. But as Andy has already said, the system that we've got at the moment is not good enough for Wellingtonians. And it's actually got us locked in to not being able to work with Wellingtonians on meaningful waste reduction. It's also got us locked into a landfill extension that we may not have otherwise needed if we didn't have this current uh, system of taking our sludge to landfill in place. So it's also our, our landfill emissions are 83.8% of um, DubCC's emission profile. So once again, the sludge has got us locked into this and we can't meaningfully reduce. So I urge all of us councillors to not relax on making sure that we seek a, a full, a long-term sustainable solution that makes Wellington City resilient for our future. I can truly tell you that this issue has my tummy in knots at night as that it is not right for us at the moment and we must seek sustainable solutions and I believe they are out there. We have other councils in New Zealand using sludge as a resource for either fertilizer or energy. And I believe as a capital, we can do something the same, not be in the vulnerable situation that we're in right now. But thanks to Ellington Water for bringing the solution for the problem at the moment. 
Kia ora. Happy to second this paper. Thanks. Thank you, well. Councillor Foon, and very well said. Councillor Rush. Write a reply. Certainly just want to do want to emphasize something the mayor said that this is not without risk. Um, having done a lot of work in the engineering space, they very rarely go to plan. Uh, in the best of times when you, you need to do a quick work round, you can haul in people to to you know to do that, um, to, to maybe give yourself, get yourself back on track. We we won't have that opportunity on this occasion. So um, without doubt there is a lot of risk and there's very little certainty, but uh, the plan is going to plan as it is. So we will let, let it play out. Um, to Councillor Paul's comment about the high emitting activity, I acknowledge that I guess my where I was coming from is that our um, pro forma uh, agenda items contains at the back supporting information which talks about considerations relating to Treaty of Waitangi and financial implications and climate change impacting considerations and it just had not applicable. Um, when, um, when we're, we probably are the most high emitting activity in New Zealand as a consequence of trucking. So I felt it was appropriate that it should be mentioned, but uh, was unable to actually get it into the final report. So I've had to put it in by way of amendment. So that, that's all I was trying to address uh, there. Uh, to Councillor Fitzsimons' um, um, contribution and in particular mention of the, the, the individuals who are trucking the sludge so I used to be a truck driver and uh, recently did a shout out to all the uh, truck drivers and essential service workers in a big trucky wave from the Wellington City Council on my Facebook page. So here goes a trucky wave from, from me, guys. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, and just a final point, uh, it, it just have a bit of a think about what it means to fly halfway around the world in the middle of a pandemic, leaving mm. your family, and your friends to go and fix someone else's wastewater system. And that's what these fellas and, and, and ladies uh, are, are doing when they come out from Germany. And, uh, and I, I really hope that uh, if, if circumstances permit, we are able to uh, welcome them in a, in a way which is appropriate for, for Wellingtonians and, and to, to really treat them like the heroes they are, because it is a big ask, a really big ask. And on top of that, we don't even know when we can get them back. So just have a think about the sacrifice they're making in order to, to help our city. And just uh, let's keep in mind how we might want to repay that in due course. Uh, I've got nothing else to say. So uh, I assume what I do is uh, put the motion to the vote. Thank you, Councillor Rush. Uh, so we will now vote. And very well said too, I might say, about our, um, our visitors from, uh, from Germany. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you all. Okay, well, that uh, concludes that paper. And now we've got to do the, I've got to find my uh, chair's notes again. Public excluded. Which is just to say, uh, to move that we go into public excluded for the reasons which are set out in the papers there. Uh, I, oh, hang on, let's find them. So the reasons are all set up there. It's to protect the privacy of uh, individuals. Uh, and the reasons there are set out uh, section 72A and section 48.1A. Uh, so I will move that. And that is seconded by, seconded there, Councillor Rush, thank you. Okay, if we can all vote accordingly. Couple more to go, I think. Councillor Rush. Oh, have we voted it? Yeah, no, no, no. We just voted to go into public excluded. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Very unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, so now what will happen is that the